Okay, and let's, we didn't even, we should have defined this like early on, but we just haven't. And it just kind of dawned on me now. It was like, what is your definition of a negative review? Is it one star only, three stars? Like, where do we divide that between like good, not so good? And how are we so somewhat penalized if we get one of these uh, uh, negative reviews? Yeah, good question. So when we're filing cases with Amazon and, and removing reviews, we're going after critical reviews. So we go after the one, two, and three stars. Now, with that being said, the a one star is not going to be equal to a five star, right? A one star is going to be weighed a lot heavier because if, if so, in your situation, if you had eight, seven positive reviews, one negative review, in theory, if they were all even, it wouldn't make that big of a deal, right? You're saying, hey, one bad move, seven good reviews, we're still at you know 80% or whatever, the, or you know X amount of stars. The problem is, is they're just not weighed the same, right? So you're, you're one star. And I've heard, you know, a one star equals five, five stars. I've heard people say 25 stars. There's been different things and it depends on competition and category. There's a lot of things that you, that we can look at there, but we do know that, that a one star is nowhere close to a five star when it comes to, you know, equivalency. Um, the same thing with a two and a three star, like a three star is not going to be as heavily weighted as a one star. A two star is not going to be you know, it's going to be a heavier weight than a three star. So, but we go after critical reviews and we had originally, when we had done the pricing model, we had said, oh, maybe we'll do one star differently, two stars and three stars. We go after all critical reviews. And so we have one base price for all of those, for the one, two and three stars um, with, with the goal being obviously to, you know, get them up in the BSR or if they, they drop down from, a, you know, 4.3 to 4.2 to get them back up to that, that position. Or if you're going to sell your brand to be able to clean it up and so you don't have as many negative reviews, there's, a lot of people, we want people to be more proactive than reactive, but as you know, you know, most of the time, and I use the, the car analogy, you know, when you go to get a, an alarm on your car, which I think everybody has these days, but let's say 10 years ago, if somebody broke your window, then you went and got an alarm on your car. So we always tell people, hey, try to be proactive about this. Like you don't want to drop down and get your lose 30% of your sales from a 4.3 to a 4.2. And then you're like, oh shoot, what do we need? You know, now we got to figure this out. Like solidify your your space, right? Solidify like your spot. And, and so I mean, we've seen clients, once again, that drop can be 10, 15, 20, 30 percent for some of them by by a from a 4.3 to a 4.2 or something like that. So, um, you know, it's a it's a, a constant evolving. I'm not going to say game, but it's a constant evolving, you know, algorithm and, and things. And it's uh, it's been a, it's been a fun journey for sure. Yeah, for sure. Now, you know, we're talking about the relevancy of five stars versus one stars. Um, why isn't it just easier to try to go after more five stars and hoping that this negative two or three or 10 will just eventually kind of even out and go away? Hey, if we get a thousand people to do positive reviews and really push for positive reviews, then that's just going to affect the negative And maybe we just don't have to worry about that. So how do you how do you deal with that? That question? Yeah, yeah. So there's really two things. So one is we always recommend going after four and five stars. And then that's a very basic thing and kind of like a, well, no, duh. But it's, it's kind of crazy down to people that aren't don't have a strategy going after the four and five stars. So the, what I explain to people is this, the analogy I always use is like a diet. You know, if you want to go and you want to lose weight, if you work out and you eat right, you're going to lose weight faster. I mean, that's doing those two things, right? I I historically have been a guy that will go and work out and I don't always eat great, right? Like I, my wife makes amazing food, but I eat too much. I drink beer, I'm Irish. There's nothing I can do, right? I'm, I'm, a, I'm a victim of, of, of who I am. So, so what happens there is I don't, I'm not going to shed 10 pounds in two months, right? Because I'm not really not committing to both things. So what I tell people is like, hey, listen, we'll take care of the critical reviews, right? We'll, we'll knock those down, which are going to be extremely valuable, but you got to get the four and five stars. You just really do. If you had... 100 four and five star reviews and you get a bad review it's not going to hurt you as much and if, if you have once again three four or five star reviews and you get a negative review you're done i mean you, you are literally done and in those situations it becomes it's hard because you spend all this money and we see a lot of that with launches we talked a little bit about that at the beginning of this so always get four and five star reviews as many as you can obviously right have some kind of a strategy there but i always recommend go after the four and five stars um, and then we'll go after this. And once again, now what we're going to be doing is we're looking to shift this, right? We're looking for Amazon to go because we know the minute you get a negative review, you start going down in your BSR. You start getting less sales. You start feeling that and going, man, what is going on here? But if you're getting tons of reviews and we're taking care of these, you'll see that transition if that's what you're looking for sooner than later.